Hey everyone, so perhaps you've heard of the YouTube channel Rationality Rules. I'm actually a fan and I watch a good amount of his videos and I agree with a lot of what he has to say on a variety of topics. However, he recently put out a video titled Why I'm Not a Libertarian and I have a few things to say about this. The video is broken down into three main objections um, that he makes. Uh, the first one is essentially that someone who is talented, strong, intelligent, or generally handed a good genetic card, they did not really earn what they get in life as what they have is a direct consequence from their natural gifts that they didn't really have to put time and energy into obtaining. They were born that way, therefore they put in little to no effort. Therefore we are all owed a piece of their success because they didn't really earn it. It was given to them by a genetic lottery almost. Now one issue I take with this is what about people who are not naturally gifted and had to bust their ass to get where they are? What about that person who has an extremely difficult time grasping mathematical concepts but dedicated themselves through discipline and grueling study to overcome their natural obstacles to become an engineer or a programmer? How do you differentiate between those two or don't you? Someone who becomes an expert in their field through a high degree of dedication and discipline because they are not naturally intellectually gifted <clears throat> are they let off the hook since their success did not come from natural genetic ability but rather it came from that dedication and discipline are you going to follow kids through their childhood to determine which are naturally gifted so you can extract any wealth that stems from what they do later on in life if you think that they've had too easy of a time due to their genetic gifts Furthermore, I just did a video the other day um, mentioning that the economy is not a zero-sum game. We do not lose just because someone else wins. Does rationality rules recognize that we already do benefit from the geniuses among us? Henry Ford was a very rich individual. If he was not taxed at all throughout his life, did we still not benefit from him regardless? Does that ever enter into the equation to figure out how much of his wealth needs to be confiscated? Would you ever consider the fact that Henry Ford or any highly successful, naturally gifted entrepreneur transformed all of society for the better? Would that convince you that perhaps the successful naturally gifted people are not merely parasites and they already do have a net positive effect on society that these naturally gifted people did not use their talents in a vacuum I would suggest that a better way of bringing about prosperity would be to not punish those who are gifted um, and I think that those are valid questions another thing to mention about this notion of punishing people for their natural talents and let's be clear that is exactly what this is you can put it as euphemistically as you'd like but this is advocating for punishing people for being talented if the slippery slope is to be considered here you may end up with a situation resembling the story of Harrison Bergeron now I am NOT saying that rationality rules would want that I think he would be steadfast against a situation like that because I do think he is a good person and I mean that but it is worth pointing out that the logic is very similar and for anyone who doesn't know about Harrison Bergeron it was a fictional story written by Kurt Vonnegut about a dystopian future in which the government makes everyone equal by inflicting handicaps on people. So if you're naturally strong, you will have weights attached to you. If you are intelligent, an earpiece will be placed in your ear that plays loud radio signals to distract you, etc. This is, of course, to make everyone equal, and it works. Everyone's equal in that society. But that begs the question, at what cost? Now again, I am not saying that rationality rules would advocate for something like that. But I think it's worth pointing out that both situations stem from the idea that those who are naturally gifted need to be taken down a peg or two. Okay, his second point is that natural rights don't exist. To this I say he's right in a way. Now hear me out. You cannot waive the freedom of speech. You can't take the temperature of the freedom to worship or to not worship. Natural rights are not a tangible thing in and of themselves. But a very similar thing can be said about numbers. The number three is purely an abstract idea until you apply it to something. Natural rights are purely an abstract idea until you apply it to human beings. They are an idea. Just merely thinking about three doesn't mean anything and has no usefulness. But human beings found that this purely abstract abstract idea of numbers can be extremely useful if administered to the natural material world. 
natural rights to me are the same thing. They don't really exist, but okay, whoever said they were tangible, whoever said natural rights can be studied in a laboratory. I never said that, but I think it's worth pointing out that societies that don't view the world through that lens, at least to a large degree, they generally tend to fall into chaos. And actually, in a way, what I just said is somewhat of a way to look at the tangible real effects that natural rights have. When they are accepted as an idea, as a philosophy, as a lens to view other people, as, as a lens to view how you should treat other people, those societies tend to have real, tangible, positive results. So maybe the existence of natural rights is up for debate. Okay, fine. But I have a very high degree of confidence in saying that the effects of recognizing natural rights do have an extremely tangible effect that is so positive and potent that it's impossible not to notice. And frankly, it would be extraordinarily foolish to disregard them. Furthermore, his assertion that people have a right to the products of other genetically gifted people's labor, well, that would be a supposed right that he, uh, that he supports, and that falls directly into the same category that he places natural rights. So frankly, if he wants to disregard natural rights based off the fact that they don't tangibly exist in and of themselves, then I can do the exact same thing when he says people should have a right to things which he does at the end of his video. So when it comes to rights being viewed how he wants to view them, it doesn't concern him in the least that they don't really exist because he thinks a better society will emerge if his perspective of rights is accepted by people. But when it comes to natural rights, he thinks that those can't be considered because by you just existing, well, that says nothing about how we should treat you. Natural rights don't exist, but somehow the right to someone else's fruit does exist. You see, he's playing the exact same game libertarians are playing. He is basing what he believes should be done on the exact same foundation that libertarians use. All right, I'll try and keep this last one short. Um, his third reason for not being a libertarian is that he does not believe in free will. Okay, that's fine. Um, in a weird sense, I actually have no idea if we do have free will or not. Um, I think it's kind of inconsequential to this. But I will say that at the beginning of this video, he quoted Christopher Hitchens, um, which is funny to me because one of my favorite things that Christopher Hitchens always said was that, of course, we have free will. We have no choice. But let's say Hitchens is wrong and we don't have free will. And maybe he is wrong. Okay, that leaves us in the exact same position of what we're going to do regardless of if we're in control or not. We can wallow in the thought that it's futile to do what we think is right, or we can just try and do what we think is right. I either will utilize free will to be a libertarian, or I will attempt to exert control that I feel like I have over myself to maybe direct myself into the libertarian direction. The only criticism he can make of me would be that I didn't really freely choose to be a libertarian. Okay, fine. I didn't freely choose to think logically and rationally about libertarianism, but that doesn't take away the fact that I thought logically and rationally about libertarianism. And this can be applied to anything in life, personal decisions, economic decisions, you name it. Whether it was free will or by a subconsciously guided will, it doesn't make a difference. Furthermore, this would be a criticism that, if true, can be made against anything you ever come up with. So it seems to cancel everything out, and then we're back at square one regardless. But that has to be it for now. Please like and subscribe by your own free will or with your unpremeditated will. Makes no difference to me which one it is. Alright, see ya.